Hello everyone, welcome back. We are at Green Valley Gap in St. George, Utah. I'm right along the cliff side. And what this is, is a lot of sport and top roping routes. If you guys remember um, North Table Mountain in Golden, a lot of my first videos were filmed there. It's just like that, but <laughs> look at the approach. I literally can drive up to the cliff side and hear all the anchors along the ledge. Like you can continue to drive and there's anchors along. See those chains right here? There's some chains hidden under here. Looks like some chains over here. Um, even you could sling that rock. Sorry, I need to point down. Sling that rock. But you see that route over there? That's the one we're gonna try. Oh, where my finger's pointing. You have some chains off there. I don't know how it's gonna be. Maybe. The closer I look at it, it looks kinda hard. I might be able to find it on Mountain Project, but I wanna show you guys some changes I've made to my harness setup. Um, my first top soloing harness setup video was a little off. I'm, you know, I was still getting used to figuring out things. I mean, if you look at it, everything was done properly and it would work and safe. But what I'm looking for is efficiency, you know, the le least amount of weight, least amount of drag, and just um, only, you know, carrying what you need, but at the same time, doing it more safe. So I wanna show you guys what I've changed to my setup. Let's see. Uh, let's do this off my car. We're, you know, I just wanna get a good angle for this for you guys. But what I wanna show you that has been done is actually we'll go me in the sun. You guys get the lighting for it. All right, so check this out. Right now, I have a sling, a few foot long, <clears throat> made of webbing for my chest. It's X in the back and is fed through a circular carabiner, a locking carabiner, of course. Right here is an ascender, which is, if you watch my last one, it's the same one. It's a Wild Countryman 2. Um, this yellow sling right here is extremely important. If you guys saw my last few videos of top sewing, I used to use a daisy chain that I have and it had some extra slack. Ugh, it just got in the way. This is something I've done more that's more efficient for me. But this right here needs to be here in a top solo setup because I did it when I started and I saw other people who've tried it too make the same mistake where they only climb with this thing right here as their chest support. And this right here is just to keep it centered and keep it on your shoulders. When you fall, the loading point of this will be from your belay loop to the center piece of your chest. So this yellow strand, when you take the fall, is being loaded and not the blue. Because if you've ever tried it without the yellow and just fell, it just yanks up your arms and it's really uncomfortable. And if you did it and not knowing really high up and only had that as your one ascender, you'd slip right out of your arms, you'd fall to your death. So it's always important to remember you need a centerpiece right here. I'm not trying to be like a lesson or anything. I just think it's extremely important if you're going to be following any of these rules to have this right here. Because if you don't, this right here alone is not going to keep you safe. So let's move on. Down here we have another ascender, which is a Kong 2. It's, uh, it's the duck. I think it's the duck made by Kong. It's freaking amazing. I love it. It's very light and efficient. I have that down here on a locking carabiner that also has the ability to stay here. We want everything to be like loaded properly and straight. With the regular carabiner, everything kind of flops around while you're moving. There's a lot of momentum and climbing. So we want to make sure when I take a fall, these two pieces are always falling like this. They don't want to be sideways. They don't want to be upside down. You want to, when you're, it's extremely important that, you know, you're having a good setup will prevent things from happening like cross loading 
Like let's say if you did something weird on the climb, like yes, this is locking, but I take a fall on this bad boy right here. It's here, I need to show you guys like this. It's cross loaded, but I know it's not locked right now because we're just talking, but let's say I'm climbing in a scenario where I fall like this. The carabiner is meant to be loaded, not on the spine. It's meant to be loaded from this direction. So yes, it still will probably catch the weight, but you are putting yourself in trouble for maybe a carabiner busting. And it's just good to make sure everything is kept safe and straight. That's why I have this one here and up here. It's in a center and there's like, everything is dressed neat. I have the, the sling here, the sling here, and only a piece right here. It looks great. Uh, moving on, I got a new personal anchor system given to me by Steve for Christmas. It's got a beautiful Petzl carabiner locking, of course. But what this is, is if you look down here, I have a single, like, I don't even, oh, I'm spacing it. Sorry, guys, I'm stoned. But this piece right here is, it's called like a quick link. That's the word for it. I'm going to take it off and show you guys. This quick link right here. It's going to be a mother bitch to get off because it has to go through the whole delay loop. But almost there. There we go. This quick link right here is my new anchor uh, locking points for being on my belay loop. It's no longer through these two pieces like everything else is. You know how I always like to tell you guys to go through both of them. It's just through my belay harness and it does good. Um, it's used as a personal anchor system. I'm not climbing on it, but it's what will be done right here. If I can figure out how to close it. I'll speed this part up. You guys are like, what the fuck, hurry up, Kevin. I gotta make sure it's sealed because if I don't do it all the way, I probably, I mean, I won't forget to check later, but come on guys, let's just be smart. All right, it's locked. So what this bad boy is, is it is a anchor with, personal anchor with cordelette, and it has on here a VT pressing. And it's a certain knot, you guys can look it up, and uh, learn it for yourself. I'm not going to teach you it in this video. It'll just take too long. But what it is is these are two overhand water knots. That and there's called water knots, I believe, and they they lock. They keep this thing, which is a piece of cordelette that is folded a bunch of times, um, tied together because it's one long strand. So this is a very safe knot. You can look it up. I think it's called the water knot or double overhanded knot. There's several names for it. But what makes this personal anchor cool? What makes this personal anchor fun and unique is its extends. If I come to an anchor and I want it to be smaller, I shorten it like this, and it can be this far away. If I want it to be very long, because I'm you know reaching far for something, I can bring it out or shorten it. And because of this friction knot, I believe it's called a VT Pressic. It allows, as soon as it's weighted, this bite pinches. So that's a cool new feature that I have on here I wanted to share with you guys. I don't want to get too much into it because we have some stuff to cover more along the way. I learned more on steeper routes that are sport routes. It's cool to bring a few quickie slip and hoopers, little quick draws. Because if you're bringing your top soloing setup to a steep route where it's overhung, and you've seen this before in my videos, if you fall as you're climbing and you swing out away, it's really hard to bring yourself back to the rock. If you're climbing a steep overhung route that I am setting up pre prior to climbing, I can lower and clip these bad boys in. You guys saw me do this on the outro wall video a few months ago. But what I did was I used, utilized these quick draws to keep me closer to the root. And as I'm climbing, I pull them away and clip them onto myself. But it, I've learned that that has helped me a lot with conserving energy, staying more safe, because you can sometimes swing very far out being on a top solo setup. What else do we got? We got chalk back here. I have a Grigri. Um, for safety lowering, I've been using an ATC sometimes when I get stuck on roots, which is not cool. But this thing will get me out of trouble if I get exhausted. I can just hop on a Grigri line and use that. Um, it's good to have that bad boy back on my arsenal. I got chalk bag as well. But um, 
Another thing I want to show you guys is it's a third hand backup and you can tie, I'm not going to show you how to use it, but when I'm ascending or descending, if I put this onto the rope and wrap it around a bunch of times and tie it to itself again, it becomes a third hand backup. Kind of like what this guy is doing. It's like making a friction bite onto the rope as you're lowering. I will use it sometime in a, in a future video, but right now we're just going to keep moving on. I don't want this to be too long. I have back here a bunch of extra locking carabiners for my rope solo setup because we'll just get to it. I'll show you guys the setup I'm about to get on and we'll take it from there. All right guys, I finished setting up the anchor system we're gonna use on this route. I think this route's called the wave. We're gonna check more when we get to the bottom. It's really hard to tell what they are when you just peek at them. But um, let me put in my personal anchor system. So I'm safe, because safety and fun are number one. Kevin D climbing channel. Uh, we're gonna lock this bad boy in. Make sure I'm in nice. All right, what I have here is two, two locking carabiners into a new static rope which is not dynamic. So this is used for like cannoneering. So what it does is I'm having it over the sharp edge and then below I have my other rope, which is for stretching and climbing. But this right here is for just anchors cause it's not that very long, but I have a figure eight on a figure eight down to double Alpine butterfly knots to locking carabiners to another double alpine butterfly knot, which you guys have seen before. And what I'm trying to do is eliminate all the rope drag and stress this sharp edge is going to give my red rope, orange rope. So we're gonna go down to the bottom, scramble down this way and pull on the rope, do a pull test, see how everything looks. I'm gonna put a tarp down under this just to save the rope a little bit of love, but um, let's go see from the bottom.
so much fun.